Back to the Texas Players Lounge for Longhorn Network's continuing coverage of National Signing Day presented by Cavenders. We're now joined by Stan Drayton, who looks like he could still be a player. Uh, I agree. The running back spot instead, Listen, running back coach. That's a good thing. Also yes, associate head coach here at the University of Texas. <laughs> First and foremost, what's the importance of this day in terms of building a program? Well, it's the foundation block of, of our culture. You know, um, Tom Herman is bringing in a certain attitude, a certain demeanor. Uh, we're, t we're trying to get our players to buy into a certain thing. And these players are going to be the foundation blocks uh, for us moving forward. So it's very important for us uh, to establish a certain type of player that's going to fit the culture that we're trying to present here. And uh, it's very exciting because we know that uh, we're not recruiting stars or whatever it may be. We're recruiting that type of player that can build into our culture and help enhance what Texas has always been for, for many, many years. Now, Coach, you won't say this, but we can. You're big time. I mean, oh. You say the name, yeah. Stan Drayton. I mean, that resonates yeah. in college football in the NFL. You could be anywhere. Why Tom Herman and the University of Texas? Well, Tom Herman is a guy that he's, you know, he says something and he does it, you know. And uh, I can always see bringing me, my family around someone that I can just lay my head on the pillow and know that, you know, he's going to do what he says he's going to do. Um, he loves kids. I love kids. I love developing kids people and that's what he's all about and um, you know as long as I can get myself in a situation around people that I can trust people who love kids people who are willing to make sacrifices for that purpose um, it's a no-brainer for me it really is and it's Texas I mean come on what, <laughs> yeah. what, what are we talking about you know um, you know I grew up in Ohio and you know everybody talks about Ohio State and Ohio State is that type of program yeah. but Texas has always been uh, one of the cornerstones of football you know and for me to sit here wearing this burnt orange right now it's a it's a great honor it really is so before I open it up to these guys you say you love working with kids yeah. Have you seen a lot of kids that look like Chris Warren? I've <laughs> coached some backs in my day, man, but I've never seen one look like Chris Warren. I mean, Jerome Bettis is the only one I can think of that was that size, you know. But um, the one thing about Chris is he's very conscientious. Um, he wants to be great, you know. Um, we still got to, you know, work on some things to help him get to that, yeah. that goal. Um, but he's definitely got the traits of, of, a, of a being a great back. So we just got to go to work. Speaking of those characteristics and those uh, things that you need to excel in this offense, what are those uh, it, for, for a running back to have? Well, for me, the number one thing is you got to be tough. You know, if you, if you can't bring an element of toughness, then uh, you're not going to survive in that room. Um, he's got natural vision, you know, uh, he's got a north-south mentality about himself that I enjoy. Um, but you got to be smart in this offense. I mean, we're not just a one-dimensional backfield. You got to be able to protect your quarterback. You got to be able to get out and catch the ball. Uh, you got to provide more value uh, to this football team other than just carrying the football. So I think he, uh, Chris does have some of those attributes, some of those traits. Um, we just got to fine tune it. Coach, your resume speaks for itself, coaching guys like Ezekiel Elliott, Jay Howard, both league leading NFL type rushers. How do you bring out the best in your players? How have you done that over the course of your career? Uh, they first know that I really care about them. Uh, I care about them tremendously. And, uh, you know, the, one of the first conversations that we have is, you know, what do you want to be? How good do you want to be? And uh, it's kind of a double-edged sore for them because they tell me all their goals and their ambitions. <laughs> and I claim yeah, you it. got them. I claim <laughs> it, you know, and I, and I use it in those tough moments when – um, they want to quit or they want to give up or they don't believe they can take it to the next level. I'm in their ear. Well, you told me this, you know, and I'm here to make you do it. And you no longer have a choice about it, you know. So um, that's, that's pretty much it, you know. Um, they know I care about them. They know I'm trying to get them to reach their, their full potential, and I'm going to go – to the extent, whatever extent, to, to get that done. Wait, that seems like you can motivate guys, and that, that yeah. is exactly what we talked about with this Herman staff. But how, does, how much does it help, though, having an Earl Campbell, Cedric <laughs> Benson, Ricky Williams, Deontay Foreman now in that group to have played here and worn the burnt orange? It helps. You know, it, you know what it does, it applies pressure to the unit. Yeah. You know, and um, you don't really know what's in a man until you put him in that corner 
back them into that corner and put pressure on them, apply that pressure on them. And, you know, we have a responsibility with guys that came through this program before us to live up to a certain standard. And, and it applies pressure on us. And uh, I'm a person that loves to thrive in that. And, it, you know, um, we force our players to thrive through pressure. OK, so um, those are the things that uh, make them uncomfortable. And you can't move forward. You can't grow unless you're in uncomfortable moments over and over and over again. So that's what we try to do. And one of the big messages that Coach Herman had for Ahmad and Emmanuel being live town Longhorns just a day ago was this program's open. He wants the letter winners coming back. How about that increased dynamic of not just knowing who came before you, but having an Earl Campbell out at practice yeah. watching you work out, having a Ricky Williams out at practice watching you do your job. I'll tell you what, I'm, uh, I got to really watch myself because I'll be in <laughs> awe seeing those guys at <laughs> practice, you know, because I've had so much respect for those guys. I grew up watching Earl Campbell, and I had so much respect for Ricky Williams' game. Um, those are the guys that help push our players to the next level. I mean, it's not like they're sitting there hoping and wishing they don't, break their records or anything like that. No, they're hoping and wishing that they do, mm -hmm. that they maintain a standard that they've set. Uh, there's blood and sweat left out on that field yeah. from those guys. And uh, our players need to know and respect that, you know, and uh, my job is to make sure that they do it. What do you see out of Tennille Carter and Daniel Young? Two exciting young football players. Tennille Carter, obviously in the program right now, uh, working his butt off. Uh, doesn't know quite how to grind the way we're going to grind here. Uh, he's going to figure that out real quick. But he's a dynamic <laughs> football player. Um, you get him in space, he's gone. Yeah. You get him in space, he's gone. Uh, Danny Young's a guy that's going to play on contact, play pass contact. You know, he comes from a tough program. Uh, he has good natural vision, you know, uh, the advantage that he has is that he's played on both sides of the football, so he understands backer fits. Uh, both of those guys are going to have uh, their work cut out for them as far as learning defenses, uh, understanding, so they can be able to anticipate a little bit better. Uh, but once they figure that point out, uh, that part of it out, they're going to be dynamic. Coach, you're coaching the pro rankings. Do you coach your college players any differently? Yeah, well, you know, no. Uh, I coach them all hard as hell, <laughs> you know, um, but the truth of the matter is when you're in the pros, uh, there's kind of a grown man element to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, they're there with a, uh, with a purpose of survival, you know, and every day their job can be taken away from them. And I can't say that I don't present that the demeanor in my meeting room, too, because it's the same thing. There's no starter in that room. They all know that. And every day they can win or lose their job. You know, so in that sense, it's the same. But uh, in the pros, they're grown men. So, the, you know, I'm not chasing them around the class. You know, I'm not, you know, uh, teaching them how to live right. We just find them. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't do those things. You know what I mean? You know, but, um, no, as far as the, the toughness component and the everyday grind that we go through, it's pretty similar. Yeah. And there's more vetting that you have the opportunity to do in the NFL. When you draft guys, yeah. there is an elongated process you go through with interviews. You don't have the luxury of that time, that exactly. much contact. So when you're out recruiting, how are you figuring out, A, if the kid can play, B, what kind of character he has, and yeah. C, what he does when he is challenged, when it is going tough? Absolutely. You have to get off the football field. You have to turn the film off, and you have to get into this kid's life and see what's making him tick. You have to get to know the champions that have been into this kid's life. Is it the mom? Is it the dad? Is it the uncle? Is it the brother? You know, uh, how has this kid been raised? You know, uh, what has happened in the face of adversity uh, during the course of his upbringing? You find out all those things, and those are the traits that you bring to your evaluation uh, so you don't make those mistakes. When did you know Ezekiel Elliott was capable of doing everything he's done? I knew in high school, actually, that he was very capable of being a, a very good back. Uh, I didn't know how good. Um, but I knew that when I walked into that school, everyone loved him, from the principal all the way down to the janitor. Everybody knew him. So I knew that he was a socially conscious kid. Um, and then when you start talking to the coaches of how smart he was naturally and picking up on things, you know, you tell him one time and he can apply it to execution. Uh, that, was, that was another trait that was, that was special. And then you turn the film on, you see him playing all over the place. You I mean, he's playing safety, he's playing receiver, he's playing running back. Sometimes wow. he's playing quarterback. Wow. And you see, you know, in order for a kid to be able to do that, he has a natural gift of awareness on the football field. You know, so it just transpired to him getting into the room, uh, playing behind Carlos Hyde, 
you know, seeing Carlos Hyde develop, seeing Carlos Hyde make mistakes, and, and learning along the way through Carlos Hyde and, um, and becoming hungry enough, you know, that he just wanted to be better than Carlos Hyde. And at that point, you know, he started. And you guys were back. stacked. Every yeah. position <laughs> at Ohio State, yep. Urban Meyer, Coach Herman, yourself. I know you say you don't chase stars, but you sure. chase guys that can play. Absolutely. And the proof is in the pudding. The numbers back that up a lot of times. How close do you feel you are to having that dynamic here at the University of Texas? What kind of work needs to go in to getting to that point? I'm going to be honest with you. We have a long way to go in that room. You know, the skill sets are there. You know, I'm still learning my guys. You know, it's, it's time for me to get around them a lot. You know, um, they have the traits, all right? They want to be great. They don't know how, okay? Um, I don't know the toughness component yet. You know, I, you can't tell me you're tough through your, wor your words, <laughs> you know? So there's still a lot of me, yeah. you know, trying to figure out through mat drills, through, you know, the off season, in the weight room, uh, to sure, make sure they have the element of toughness that it's going to take for them to be great. You know, so we just have a lot of work to do in that respect, a lot of uh, unanswered questions, a lot of unknowns. Um, but as far as the skill set, the skill set's in the room. A lot of energy around this Texas no program question. right now. You're a big reason why. Coach Drayton, thank you so much thank for your time. Thank you very time. much. Thanks for having me. Happy to have you here. All right, thank you.